rid of the burns. I'm Kevin. And I'm Virginia. We have been married for 60 years in a row. We were married on August 17th, 1973. No. 63. <laughs> <laughs> and we're off and running. There we are. Okay. I went to Regis. He went to Boston College. Regis had a dance. He came with his friend Bill Ryan up to the dance, and we met in the gymnasium at Regis College. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. So romantic. We danced with all sorts of people, and then I met this beautiful young lady uh, and asked her to dance. Well, probably knowing her, she probably asked me to dance. Oh, no, not at that point. <laughs> not at that point. Anyway, uh, we danced, we talked, uh, and at the end of the night, uh, I think I got a phone number. Might have, yeah. Uh, and I said, would you mind if I call you and, and maybe we can have an, a real date? And Piccolo 45677. Oh my God, she remembers the phone number. <laughs> I don't have a clue. We're not. It was like, like, like. I like you, I like you, I like yeah. you, I like you, I like you. What we found out is that we had a lot of stuff in common. I was a theater nut, okay? I was an English major. I was in a dramatic society there. I was in plays. Um, Virginia had been to... Had, <laughs> I went to a play. She had seen a play at mm. one point, And we started going to, um, you know, to theaters in Boston. Uh, at that stage, we had no. I had no money whatsoever, so we, we used to sit in the second balcony, okay, right. uh, in which they didn't have uh, fire extinguishers. They had buckets with sand. sand in it, and I said, "Oh my God, we're in trouble if this thing catches <laughs> fire." Anyway, but and it just kept going and right. going and going and going and going. We finally had a relationship, and um, it was getting serious. And one night he said, let's go out to dinner Saturday night. And we were going to Framingham, uh, if you know the Boston area. Regis is in Weston, which is close to Framingham. And he said, I have to swing by Regis because I have to see the drama teacher there for whatever reason. I said, sure. So we went into the gymnasium to meet uh, Sister Gretchen, the drama teacher. And where we had danced in our sophomore year of college, he got down on one knee and asked me to marry him at that spot. Da -da. That's pretty cool da -da. for an Irishman from South Boston to think about that. That's so creative. Right. And I think it's creativity uh, that we both have that really uh, keeps us conjoined because um, we're both very creative people. But that was, very, that was astoundingly romantic. Mm. On August... 17th, as I said, 1963, we were married. Right after the reception, we got in the car, my dad's car that I had borrowed, a big old Oldsmobile, uh, and we drove up to the Berkshires, and we stayed at a beautiful little inn up there. Um, and uh, the, next, uh, the next day, uh, we went to Tanglewood to the, hear the Boston Symphony Orchestra play. Um, and uh, on August 17th, uh, 2023, <laughs> 23. 23, thank yeah, you. Right. Uh, lost welcome. track of days. Uh, we went back up to the Birchius. Didn't, didn't stay at the inn. I don't even know where the inn is, no. but uh, we went out there and next day on August 18th of this of last year, last year we went to hear the Boston Symphony. Uh, and I managed to go to the Tanglewood, Boston Symphony Orchestra Tanglewood archives online, and I found the program from the Boston Symphony Orchestra at Tanglewood on August 18th, 1963. 63. Um, yeah, and printed it out and put it in an album. Yeah. So, I mean, it, um, don't ask me what it was, but <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Yes, Moon River, which 
Henry Mancini, which is really interesting because we went to a magnificent concert at the Brick Box, um, Hanover Theatre's Brick Box, two nights ago. And the incredible Tchaikovsky Trio played Moon River on the piano with the cello. So that was, um, that was one, that was beautiful. We held, right? we held hands. We held that hands. That was, you know, 1963, yeah. 62, 63. Like for That was a big song. Right. And so that was the song that we, you know, first dance at the, at the reception. Right. All of that sort of stuff. Uh, me without question, really. It, 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 it takes practice. She's she's got, got it. it. She's got it down pat. Happy marriage means two closets for your clothes, two bathrooms. Don't come near my my makeup. Don't touch anything. And two televisions. I can't stand watching television with Kevin. I'm a clicker. He's a clicker. He's a channel changer. And that provides um, separate experiences. So what I watch, which is very intellectual and intelligent and creative, and he watches football. And we can compare them because um, I think that's the And also we had a thing we named after a restaurant that we were at at the Cape. It was a bar. It was a bar. Uh, called Oliver's in Yarmouth, and we made a contract when I left teaching, which was that we would have time apart from each other. I think that's really, really important. First of all, because you're apart, but second of all, because you bring different things to the table, and that's really interesting. We have very interesting conversations because of our separate experiences. We actually call it, we're sitting at the bar, having a drink and, and sandwiches or something like that. And we now call it the Oliver Compact. That's kind of... Time apart. Time is, apart. That's really, important. really important, especially if you're both not working anymore. That's uh, so important. Right. Funny little anecdote. Uh, we have three children. That's not the anecdote. We have three wonderful children we adore. Um, and we were talking the other night with our two daughters in the room. And we mentioned to them this Oliver Pact about making sure for a happy relationship that you have time apart. And one of our daughters said, after a, a meaningful pause, why didn't you ever tell me that when I was married? <laughs> it might have made it work. <laughs> so, um, ta-da, ta-da, too late. William Shakespeare and his wife Anne Hathaway, um, that would be my ideal couple. E even And you know why? Because he spent most of his time in London and she was in Stratford, so th that was a happy marriage. They had the Oliver Compact. They had the Oliver Compact, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, we go to the theater. All the time. All the time. Yeah. Well, if we go to New York City for Six days, we'll go to five plays. <laughs> All right, so that's the kind of uh, excitement we both get out of theater, both doing it and seeing it. And then, most important of all, you want to know the best times? We go to a play, we go to a nearby lounge or someplace, and we talk about the play. In that's the best. In Europe, we go to a place called... Joe Allen's. Joe Allen's. Where all the actor people hang out. They all hang out there. And I we think... sit at the table and fight. And we, we no, we yeah, discuss. Sometimes. We discuss. And it's... She loved it, I hated it, first, vice versa. That no. makes it most fun if, if we disagree about the play. To agree about the play is boring. London. 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 We, we've been to... We've been all over the world. We've been to Antarctica. We've been to Alaska. We've been all over Europe. Um, sailed down the Blue Danube. But I, th I think flying to London, seeing five plays, and then taking the train to Stratford and seeing five more plays was one of the best vacations we took. And uh, we would do it again. That would 
that would be it. Getting a feel of where we're coming, where we are. Get the idea (laughs) of who we are. Right. Hi, good art. This is Beverly. I'm Beverly. Yeah. And we've been married 66 years. My dad had just got transferred to Flint, Michigan. And I was 14. She was 13. My neighborhood, I went to a parochial school. She went to the public school. All of my friends were public school because I didn't have any classmates there. So I hung out with them. One of my best friends had a 13th birthday party. And he went to school with Bev, so he invited all of her classmates and he invited me and so we met at his 13th birthday party yeah it was fun and she called me a jerk yep (laughs) after we met and she called me a jerk she uh sent the word by her grapevine back that she wanted to go with me this is like three four weeks later so we started going together, uh, but we would go together and we'd break up and then we'd date others and then we'd go together for the part of the next three years. And, and then we started going steady, steady and at, we got married at 18 and 19 and a year before marriage we got engaged. Never did. Didn't have to do with do that. No, it just that it we both there. knew we were supposed to be married. <laughs> so we went together. And it was. And we, we picked out her diamond together and she, and she wore it. And that's we knew what we were going to do and we did And it. we set the date. And so far, we had we've to, been doing it. Had to marry. Yeah. yeah. But like, did you ever get down on your knee? No. Yep. <laughs> Our biggest backer in getting married was her mother. Her mother was sold on me for whatever reason. If she'd break up with me, she'd get a talking to by her mother. <laughs> <laughs> we got married on the 28th of December. So all our flowers were provided by the church. <laughs> they were all for Christmas. <laughs> so we had, and it was at St. Michael's in Flint, Michigan. Yep. And uh, it was a nice wedding, although nothing like they have today. She had her beautiful dress. Uh, Like I said, the mother-in-law was in our favor. The father-in-law was not so much. He he disagreed with me for reasons. (laughs) (laughs) He finally warmed to me after a few years of marriage. Uh, just hug her and kiss her and tell her I love her all the time. Have for all the years. I've always given the same advice. Yes, ma'am. But we have a very open marriage in that we discuss everything. We, uh, yep. we don't keep secrets from each other. Yeah, but that's right. And uh, if we, I'm yeah, disturbed we about something, she's disturbed about something, we talk it out. But we hadn't had many of those occasions. Literally, listening to each other, talking out any problems or discontent you have, I call it, yes, ma'am. And it's been that way pretty much. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Not that I'm the boss or she's the boss, it's that we're the boss. Right. We lived in Florida after I retired for about 20 years, and we yeah. weren't far from the beach. Yeah. In fact, uh, we were in a condo yeah, yeah, where you had your own house on the condo land, and uh, it had a beach, so we could just go to it all the time. Easy walk. It'd be Hawaii, and we've been there many times. So it happened in my job, uh, I was sitting on the board of a, a joint venture and a Japanese joint venture. So they scheduled the annual meeting in, in Hawaii and we, the Americans, would take 
Hawaii is with us. The Japanese never did. But we'd go, she'd sit on the beach while we had our meetings, and I'd go out and sit with them, and the rest of the guys would go play golf. <laughs> The days we had our children are extra special to us. Uh, the days our children uh, got out and went to school, and the days they graduated, I took them all to, we have four children. I took the four children when they finished their first two years of college. Well, one had four years, and the other ones had basically yep. two years. Except for older son, he didn't go to school. They're good kids. They are good kids. They are. And we went, I took them all to Hawaii. Yep. By then I had, in my job, I traveled a lot. And a lot of burden fell on her because I wasn't around. But uh, I had mileage, so I took all six of us to, uh, to Hawaii. We spent two weeks over there in Hawaii. And... Uh, that was a great time. Yeah. Hello, we're Lou and Sue Swinan, and we've been married for 59 years. We got married in 1964 in Philadelphia. We we're both originally from Philadelphia, but we've lived in Shrewsbury for the last 40 years. We first met uh, at a dance. Back in the 60s, it was very popular for young people to go to a dance and to, to meet uh, people of the opposite sex at the dance and have uh, a fun evening meeting new people. And so uh, Sunday night uh, in, I don't know, February, March of 1964, uh, we were both at this dance at Drexel Brook Tennis Club. And uh, I looked across the room and there was this beautiful young woman there. Some enchanted evening. <laughs> and I asked her for a dance and she said yes. And so that's how we met. A month after I met him, I got the mumps. And Lou came up, you know, I was sick and, and he came over and it, it just felt like family, you know? Like not a date, but a guy who's in your life. And I sent her flowers too. Oh, that, 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 that helped. That, that really helped. <laughs> we met, I'd say in March, it was probably March. Uh, I proposed to her in June and she was still going to college. She was going into her senior year of college. And we said, we'll get married after you graduate. Somewhere in July, I think I had the brilliant idea, hey, I've finished college, I'm working, I'm making enough money that uh, we can get a nice apartment and you can go to college every day and we can get married. Uh, and so we got married in September. Crazy kids, really. If you think about it, we were less than six months that we knew each other. And we got married September 5th in 1964. And I went back to school, and when I was at the lunch table with the other kids, they, they called me Sadie, Sadie, the married lady. <laughs> well, I actually remember giving my son advice, all of them when they got married, saying something to the effect of, you'll always think that you're doing 80% and she's doing 20%, but the fact is you're probably not. <laughs> she probably thinks the same thing, <laughs> which is true. I don't know if it was good advice or not, but that's the way I always figured it would <laughs> help them along. In general, I like somebody who's upbeat and happy personality, uh, who's ambitious, who is happy with life. Uh, I think that's important. That's my own personal opinion for the type of person I like. And Sue is a happy person, uh, smart, uh, and fun to be with every day. <laughs> uh, Another thing I would give for advice that's is... What, that's, that's what the script says here. <laughs> Another thing I would give for advice is remember that nobody's perfect. 
especially yourself. <laughs> so, you know, just realize everybody has their little, little flaws. Yeah. It's pretty hard to say what makes a, a happy couple. I think you should work at it. Uh, communication is important. Even though we have different interests, we are easy to talk to each other and we communicate well. So. We always say that one of the reasons our marriage has lasted is because we have the same values. Like we have very different interests, but we value the same things. A big part of our life has been our three boys. We're family oriented, we always were. We did things as a family growing up, so a lot of time was spent with the boys attending their uh, games, like the twins were bicycle racers. We've been to a million bicycle races. Andrew went to Shrewsbury High School and played basketball and crew. He went to the University of Pennsylvania where he rode crew. And we went to many of his races. Uh, so family was big in our lives and that helped us to stay together and focus on what was important, family. Well, if affection is a strange thing because people have different ways of showing it. Lou is very vocal about his affection. I am not as vocal about my affection. I, do you think, I think I'm more like my good. mother? Huh? Right. I'm more, I don't say it all the time, but I do it. As I get older, Sue becomes more and more my caretaker. She really looks after me and takes care of me and I appreciate that and, and I just realize more and more what a lucky guy I am. I've told her many times the best thing that ever happened in my life was that I met her and married her and I stand by that statement today. So that's the way I feel about Sue. But Lou also takes very good care of me. He helps me on the computer and does a, a, a lot of different things, like if it requires something to do with insurance or he's on it. We, we've divided up our responsibilities. Anything to do with aesthetics, the house is always clean and beautiful. Sue's an artist, and so we have lots of artwork in the house and other beautiful things. And I'm a tech guy, so I deal with all of the numbers, uh, the bills, and anything to do with the uh, computers and the, and the like. So it's kind of like a, two angles that are opposite, complementary angles, so we fit together well because we, we complete each other. One day we were driving in the car to, uh, I guess we were going up to New Hampshire or Vermont or something, but we were basically going to look at the fall foliage. And I still remember we were driving down this gorgeous forest lined road and the leaves were falling and we were playing Verdi with Beverly Sills singing. And, and it was like one of those moments where you just cry because it's so wonderful, you know? So mm, that's I, what I consider a romantic day. <laughs> I, rem I remember that, I remember yeah, that drive. Very, we yeah. made a memory of it. Yeah. What would you answer to that? Well, I have to say every year in uh, the late winter, uh, for about the past 10 years, our son Andrew takes us on a winter vacation together for a week. And we've been to some wonderful places. At our age, uh, romance isn't the number one priority, but traveling to wonderful places yeah. Uh, we're going to New Orleans uh, in the end of February. Uh, so that's this year's trip. But that's because my son does everything. Like he, he sets it up, he, you know, the car, we take the limo to the airport, they pick us up at the, he picks us up at the airport. It's it's like staying home, he, except you can know, go. He rents places. an Airbnb place. So that we're first, at a home. First class house. with yeah. swimming pools and all the amenities. So that, that's our annual trip that's romantic. Yeah. Well, I think I would say this 
I think I would say that the most important thing about uh, relationships and trying to get through the hard spots is to remember that nobody's perfect, and that really includes yourself. And I say communication, talk it out. If there's differences, work them out. Tell the other person what's bothering you and work it through. I think that's important. And you have to like the other person. I, I like Sue better today than I did yesterday, so. Uh, I like you better today than I did <laughs> yesterday, too. Yesterday must have been a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is Don and Mary Schweppe. Uh, we've been married for 59 years. I'm Paula Collins. This is my husband, Peter. We've been married for 35 years. I'm Dr. Claremont. This is my wife, Anne Marie Claremont. We've been married now for uh, 62 years.